Good morning. My name is Matt Faulkner. I'm a distinguished engineer uh, for technical marketing at Cisco. And I want to spend the next 10, 15 minutes to share with you uh, some of the details about openness in our uh, enterprise NFV solution. Enterprise NFV is a solution that we've built uh, to uh, uh, optimize and, and support the deployment of virtualized branch environments. Um, we have in this solution four layers uh, in the solution stack, starting with an x86 layer in order to provide us with uh, the hardware capabilities, uh, then a, an operating system that provides the virtualization functionality, uh, in particular based on KVM on Linux, uh, in order to abstract the physical hard, uh, hardware uh, resources, CPU, memory and storage, and present virtual CPU, memory and storage to the VMs. The third layer is uh, the, uh, the virtual machines themselves, the virtualized network functions like routing, firewall, WAS, and all of that is tied together with an orchestration layer. So in such an environment, openness is actually a very hot topic. It comes up in, in almost all of our discussions, and that's uh, one for one because openness is a, a big topic in the industry. Um, in my view, it's also super important in order to support openness in order to facilitate the introduction of virtualized branches into networks. So imagine today you're operating in a multi-vendor environment and you want to move towards virtualization. That in itself is a step that needs to be planned out. Um, virtualized network functions don't operate exactly one for one as their hardware-based counterparts you need to understand the underlying in, uh, system architecture from an x86 and hypervisor perspective. And so that requires some planning uh, and maybe some adjustments in your operational procedures. And so uh, a lot of our customers are really um, happy that we're able to support also third-party VNFs or even um, uh, application virtual machines to run their own applications or to run virtualized network functions from other vendors, in particular if they have already operationalized that in their networks in the back end. So in uh, our Cisco ENV solution, we fully embrace that, uh, and it's a solution that is open uh, to various forms of um, uh, and openness. So one of the points I wanted to highlight here is that uh, the term open itself, uh, in my view, needs to be uh, clearly defined. Some <laughs> people are uh, really, when they say open, they mean open source and GitHub and download software images from a repository, contribute programming code. That's not really what we're talking about at this stage here. The main requirement we see in virtualization of branches is the ability to run non-Cisco third-party virtualized network functions, i.e. take a virtual machine from another vendor and onboard it onto a standard Linux KVM environment and keep the functionality that is then being executed in that virtual machine. So this openness of VNF is actually the first and foremost the requirement that we see. Uh, secondly, I would say is openness from a software perspective in terms of APIs. Uh, many uh, of our customers, in particular also partners, want to use uh, open APIs in order to innovate on top and provide maybe their own uh, value-added services, uh, making some uh, small enhancements through those APIs and how the system behaves. So that's the openness at the software layer with APIs that we're supporting here at the NFEIS layer, at uh, the orchestration layer in APKM, but also increasingly inside the VNFs themselves. Uh, so one of the, uh, the topics you'll hear us talk about is programmability net confiang of iOS XE itself, and that, as an example, is also something that we can then support here. And third is uh, openness at the hardware layer. Um, so today we focus on the Cisco hardware x86 components. We have designed the system to also support non-Cisco hardware. This is something that we've also embraced, but we do that in a more controlled manner for support purposes. So let's look at um, the openness 
in a little more detail for each of these components. Most important, as I said, is uh, the ability to run virtual machines from other vendors. And here we've really taken a two-pronged approach. Um, the, first, um, um, the, uh, the first step is to publish the specifications of the underlying operating system. So if you go to Cisco, uh, developer.cisco.com, you'll find a specification that, uh, that says exactly uh, what a virtual network uh, function, what the machine, a virtual machine needs to um, adhere to in order to run on top of a standard Linux with KVM. This is no different to running uh, non-Apple software on an Apple iOS or non-Microsoft software on uh, Microsoft Windows. You see the CPU requirements, storage, memory, version requirements. We specify all that in order to um, uh, communicate that to the third party vendors and make sure that they're compliant. Interesting, as part of this specification, we also um, share the format of the metadata that they can pass to us. We talked about SRIV earlier on. So uh, the virtual machines can be described with additional metadata, how many virtual CPUs, memory, et cetera, they require from the underlying host and uh, abilities such as support for SRIOV is, a, for example, a parameter that can also be specified such that we can then leverage that when we onboard uh, that third party VNF. The second approach we've taken um, lately is to um, work on a, an actual partner ecosystem. So we want to uh, invite our partners to work a lot more closer, uh, a lot, lot more closer with us. Um, and uh, form an ecosystem. Um, the ecosystem today has a, uh, a step or the capability to allow a third party vendor to test their virtual machines in our environment on top. So we share a test plan that we would like them to go through in order to ensure that that virtual machine can run on an, uh, an, an NFEIS system. We do some testing in addition to that ourselves. And at the end of this, we have a higher confidence that that third party VNF will run as expected on an NFEIS system. We publish that, uh, that uh, ecosystem of VNFs uh, and also provide the required backend processes. Uh, one of the discussions that we've, I've had lately with a customer is, well, what do you do about support? And that's exactly what we've done with the backend processes. So uh, when we onboard an ecosystem partner, we make sure that Cisco can be the first point of contact in case something goes wrong. Uh, and our TAC will help um, as far as they can. If they run into trouble, we have the contacts of the ecosystem partners available such that uh, customers don't have to get the runaround and say, oh, no, it's not my problem. Call the other guys. So that is part of this ecosystem, provides a real value to our customers because they have a single uh, first point of contact and support uh, for any third party that are part of the ecosystem. We published all the details on developer.cisco.com. So if you want to take a look at the test plans or the format of the metadata, that's all published, so very open. So for let, let's say you want to do uh, something that's not necessarily third party, but an in-house. Right. Um, obviously, it's not going to go through that full certification process. Right. But, but it'll still run with the understanding that you're supporting it on your own. Exactly. Yes. And that, that's really one of the reasons why we have that, what we call the compliance spec. So the compliance spec is uh, it's no magic. It's basically saying we, you, your virtual machine with your own app that you want to run, as long as it runs on... Uh, CentOS version XYZ, libvirt version, KVM version, we know it'll run. It's, okay. an, uh, it's a standard Linux KVM environment, so any virtual machine that complies with these version numbers will run. Okay, so one more. Uh, if we're doing something that's not a KVM, let's say it's a, an LXC container, right. will, will that run on the ENFV or do we have to run that within the ISRV or ISRV pr as a process? <laughs> you can actually do both. Okay. <laughs> so, because iOS XE supports containers, as you learned earlier on, you now have an option to do both, right? And that's that. That's now a trade-off that you have to make. And then, a lot right. of the times, we actually find 
that people run containers inside Linux virtual machines. So they spin up a Linux VM and then inside that VM run their containers. And, and actually Linux VMs was one of the first things we've tested on here as a non-Cisco uh, virtual machine. So you really got three ways you can play. Yes, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> and there are advantages and disadvantages. Exactly. Yeah. Understood, thank you. So um, maybe just to quickly touch upon the APIs. Um, from uh, a software perspective, we are publishing as part of the solution the APIs at every software layer. First and foremost of all, NFEIS. Remember, NFEIS gives us additional capabilities in order to deploy virtual machines, register them, uh, undeploy them, configure the bridges. All of the uh, corresponding APIs are published in a reference document. Some examples. Here are the REST calls in order to register a VM, unregister it, uh, deploy the VM, find out its status, is it running as expected, um, start and stop, build the bridge in order to do internal networking, all of that supported. Similarly, on the orchestration side with APKM, um, the APIs are, to some extent, the documentation for APKM. We also publish those uh, widely and therefore give you the capability in order to enhance maybe the behavior of the orchestration system. So maybe thing to remember, NFES, ENFE is an open solution uh, supporting openness at every layer. Uh, most important is the ability to run third-party VNFs uh, on top of NFEIS. Um, so hopefully that will help foster the deployment and embrace a, a, an open world. Any questions? Everybody. If there's something I want to run in KVM that I can't get through the Cisco ecosystem, is there a way to, a way to sideload it onto the box? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Gotcha. So in, um, in ESA, you have the ability to specify your own virtual machine and say, I want to run a third-party virtual machine. You have to register it right now, so you've got to give us the, the, the OVA image, um, ideally along with the metadata, but all of that uh, can be your own developed uh, virtual machine environment. You don't have to go through the ecosystem. Of course, we encourage you for networking functions to go through the ecosystem, of, uh, but it, it's not required. It's an open, standard Linux KVM environment. As long as your virtual machine runs on it, it'll run. Gotcha.